Does a sea sponge deserve rights? Yeah. Legal rights for protection? Legal rights for protection, yeah. We've got a chicken here, a sea sponge here. Do you think they deserve equal rights? Yeah. A human and a sea sponge deserve equal rights? Yeah. Is it just as bad to step, step on a sea sponge as it is to step on a human being? Of course. Of course it is. If you think a sea sponge deserves rights, why do you eat chickens? If I literally had a sponge here and I started stepping on it, you'd probably look at me like, oh, you stepping on a sponge. If I had a chicken here, I'm stepping on it, you go, what the f are you doing? That's true. So we've got a sign here, it says veganism is a moral obligation mm -hmm. and I would like you to tell me why it's not, if you have that position. Do you want to know why I think it is? Yeah, please. I believe that we are obliged to, it's only a small change too, it's not like you've got to change a, a few things in your lifestyle, obliged to live a life that doesn't support the rights violations of non-human animals. Mm -hmm. And the best way we can do that is by being uh, vegan. What I mean by that, human beings have rights, protecting them, fundamental rights, you know, like don't, don't enslave, don't rape, don't murder, don't bash mm -hmm. innocent people. But if you took human beings and put them in the case of animals in animal agriculture, they're being forcibly bred, tortured in most cases, even if they're not tortured, they're all murdered, chopped up into pieces, sold in the supermarket, you probably would stop supporting it. We're talking about slavery and murder, really. Yeah. So that's, that's that. the, the kind of obligation I'm talking about. Like, yeah. Okay. Let's say everyone went vegan. There are obviously health, health benefits to being vegan, but there are also some deficits and some people have reported issues with having the vegan diet and then they switch back and problem solved. The reason it's not an obligation to, to not violate the rights of animals is because there are some anecdotes, like personal stories of people who did a vegan plant-based diet or something. Yeah. They reported issues and then they, they went back to eating meat and now they're okay. Mm -hmm. That's why we should, vi it's, it's okay well, to violate animals. That's just rights. the start of it. I think there are certain, well, you know, we, are, we are omnivores. We are omnivores. Yeah, so I don't really care. Okay, you don't really care, no. but everyone's ancestors. I don't care if we are... 40, if we are... 40 years of eating meat. Yeah, I don't really care okay. about that. So uh, what do you think, what are your opinions on like creatine and stuff? The reason I don't care about what we, we are or what we did used to do and stuff like that, because mm -hmm. it's not a, like, really an ethical argument. Because we could be like omnivores. I think we're more opportunistic eaters, but let's say we've been yeah, eating no, meat plants. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, we're not really designed like an omnivore like a bear or something like that. No, true. But yeah, yeah, let's say we've been eating meat and plants for this amount of time. The reason I don't care about that is because it's not, not an argument to justify violating animal rights if we can live fine as a, as a vegan. Now, using anecdotes, um, personal stories of people who may or may not have done a vegan diet properly, who knows, there's no way of tracking them, that's not data. They're saying, hey man, like, yeah, I tried this eating just lettuce and stuff, man, and then I got sick or I, I got a deficiency or blah, 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 blah. They didn't do their blood work beforehand. They didn't, they didn't track their calories. They, we don't know what they ate. There's no way of collecting data on these people to find out what, what they did wrong. And basically, like, at what point in time would you say that these anecdotes would justify, like, if you put humans in place of the animals right now, right? Let's say there's no non-human animals, there's any human animals, all right? So we've got veganism right now. We've got a bunch of science on plant-based diets saying that you can be perfectly healthy if you supplement, if you do a, a well-planned uh, mm -hmm. diet. But you have some anecdotes of people who stopped eating humans, got some deficiencies or reported some issue, come back to eating humans, right? Okay. And then felt better. Right? Okay. Do you think that, that, that those anecdotes would justify continuing this human holocaust to eat them? Place humans inside the, the, the gas chambers where they kill the animals and slaughterhouses where they kill the animals. Your justification right there would it justify continuing the human holocaust. Okay, but what would you do for those people who couldn't continue with the vegan diet because it I mean, was detriment I, to their health? Yeah, well, I mean, you're making a claim here, but you have to have, when you make a claim, right, these people out there in the ether, right? I've seen stories. I've yeah. seen stories of ex-vegans. Usually people, they, they go vegan for whatever their motivation is. It's generally, the ones that go back, it's generally health related. They mm -hmm. went vegan for, to lose weight or to, to get some magical health thing, but those who go vegan for animals are less, much less likely to, to, to revert back, right? Because yeah. they go vegan okay, for animal ethics. It was more trendy for these people. They tried it as like a gimmick kind of thing, right? you okay. know, and they do it for their health temporarily. And then they, it's like people who start the gym, you know, most people who go to the gym, they start off at the yeah, gym, it's revert like back. Most people, 50% wouldn't come back. No, it's more. After, so it's more. Just say it's more. People start the gym for their health and to get fit then mm. it's not something that they're going to be motivated to continue because it's a, not everyone's motivated to be healthy all the time, are they? But when you're motivated by something like animals having their heads cut off for an unjustifiable reason, you're more likely to stay vegan. You're more likely to go, you know what, maybe I'll take a vitamin B12 supplement. But where does that supplement come from? That's, that's the thing, like creatine. Where does it come, where do B12 supplements come from? And creatine. Where do you well, think they come from? B12 synthesized. Yeah, so? Yeah. 
So where, where do you put them in the the plants? Okay, so let's say they're a G, they're produced with GM crops. Well, okay. What's the matter with it having a B12 supplement? Well, is that not morally wrong to to use a plant as a means to? If it's not uh, that B12 doesn't come from plants. Where does where does it come from? If B12 come from plants, we wouldn't have to supplement. Vegans wouldn't have to supplement it. Uh, do they supplement it? Yeah, vegans should supplement B12. Well, because it is it just what from like living. The, in the it's soil, it's basically a bacteria tissue. produces it. Okay. And, and animals can get it from the soil, like ruminant animals can get it from the soil because the bacteria is in the soil. Or they actually inject supplements into the animals. Do you know that? They inject uh -huh. uh, either colba, which is what how they make B12, or they inject Cobra. straight up B, or they give straight up B12 supplements to chickens and pigs and animals that people eat. So the animals people eat are being supplemented Would anyway. Would you say that's wrong then? Supplementing something which is benefit, it's beneficial to them, isn't it? I know, I understand People, you, If you get B, B12 from animals, you generally get it from the supplements that they're eating, if you're eating chickens and pigs and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Know. But okay. Uh, So if you've got a problem with supplements, you probably wouldn't be eating animals anyway. Okay. But um, yeah, I don't have a moral issue with having a B12 supplement at all. Okay. I, I mean, if you think there's an ethical issue with it, then no, I tell me that, why no, there is. No, no. Yeah, I like, was just interested in... Yeah, yeah, like I, I do think that if you're not getting enough sun, like during the winter here, you should supplement with vitamin D. 100%. Yeah, I've done that in the past. Yeah, and meat eaters should do, like, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, do you know what happens to animals in animal farming? I've watched, like, Cowspiracy, stuff like that. Yeah, so no, that's an environmental you know, documentary. Okay. I mean, it's got a little bit in there, I think, but it's an, it's mostly environmental doc. I mean, like, to the degree, like, like for example, with pigs. Do you eat pigs? Uh, not really. I only okay. eat uh, white meat. So, chickens and that? Poultry. Oh, yeah, I get you, like, birds. So, we eat birds. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the birds here are mostly factory farm, yeah? Like free range as opposed to battery farm, do you mean? Yeah, well, no, you don't really get free range chicken meat here. I mean, yeah, I mean, think, be lucky even if to... it says on the, the packet, say like pretty much every every egg uh, carton. I'm talking about flesh it. here. Yeah, flesh and I mean, they must come from the same chicken, surely. No. They don't come from the same chicken. Well, it's a certain amount of flesh comes from free range eggs with uh, hens when they're murdered, but the, the chicken that you eat is not free range, man. Okay. So, I mean, okay. you're conflating eggs with with birds here, flesh. Right. Yeah. Um, but um, but anyways, like so the, the hens, they live a short life and they're, they're, they're living in suffering just by existing because they're, you know, they're falling over their bodies, their bodies grow really fast. And um, so every single chicken shed, like at a certain point in time, will just be rampant with suffering birds and then they go get slaughtered. So that's where, where, where chicken flesh generally comes from. Do you think that that's like justified to do that to those birds, to eat their bodies considering like we can be vegan? I think, oh, oh, I mean, do you think it's an obligation think, to avoid that? I wouldn't say it's an obligation necessarily. I think everyone should take steps to avoid it. Why? But Well, because obviously, as you've been saying, we literally, we can't continue like this. I Causing think the suffering to the birds, The suffering mean? and the environmental impact because it's got massive sustainability issues. And yeah, I I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I mean, I'm concerned with that, but my primary concern is like the birds being raised and murdered because I'm an animal rights activist. Actually, it's a little different to like a welfare person. Like I care about suffering like torture and things like okay. that, they happen rampantly. But I also care about the rights of the being. Cause like you can find a pigeon over here, right? They're flying around there. So say they're a happy pigeon. They lived a happy life, they're free. I would be against just walking up and killing that pigeon. Well, yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure. Would you? No, I understand that completely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even if it caused okay. them no suffering. Yeah. So that's right, well, basically. Sort of, I violated their rights. You violated their rights, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So what do you think about, say, Daphnia? Do you know what Daphnia? It's like a small water flea. A water flea? Yeah, it's, you, it's, a, it's a model organism. No. Using experimentation. Yeah, that, I don't think organisms are. No, well, I, I know that organisms are not sentient. They're like um, mm. little intelligent life forms that. There's a difference between intelligence and experience. Things can act intelligently, like germs and microbes okay. and things like that, but they're not sentient. Yeah. Well, my question is uh, chickens, cows, I'll agree with you, they are treated horribly and it's completely outrageous. And they have their rights violated as yeah, well. Yeah, they have their rights violated. Even if they're not treated horribly, yeah. Yeah. So, what about organisms that have biologically cannot experience stress. Organisms that, that cannot biologically yeah, experience, experience stress. Then I don't care about them. Because they, they, they don't care about themselves, they don't have anything to care about. They're not. Okay. The reason animal, I believe animals deserve rights is because what happens to them matters to them. But like, they're also animals. But I don't care if something is an animal. I care if they are a sentient animal. But you're an animal activist. Yeah, but I only care about sentient animals. But what, what, what makes them different? I only care about sentient beings. Yeah, no, okay. And not just animals, I care about sentient beings like you. Yeah. Um, well, you're an animal, actually. If there was like a being that wasn't technically an animal and they were sentient, I would care what happened to them. Okay. Because what happens to them matters to them because sentience is the only me sentience is the only way you can experience anything. Like yeah. it's your experience, it's who you are. You're a subject as well. Like the subject is you, the individual. 
and the sentience is your experience, your subjective experience. But it's still, it's, it's an evolution of life and all animals are alive. Okay, I don't so, care if an animal is alive. I don't care if a plant is alive. I care then if they are sentient. Root, isn't it? The, why should I care about a non-sentient being? Why shouldn't you? If it, no, 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 no. I already told you why I shouldn't because they don't have experience. Tell me why I should. Experience, but because your ethos, I think, is a more of a sort of utilitarianism for animals sort of approach to things. A rights-based approach. I told a you I'm a rights-based, yeah. Greatest amount of good for the greatest No, I'm amount. not a utilitarian. Okay. I'm an animal rights why activist. Why, why do you differentiate between, what makes you different? Because if a greater number of people got, got a great- I'm not just talking No, one second, people, I'm I'm gonna, I'll let you know why I'm not a pure okay. utilitarian. I care about suffering and well-being, mm -hmm. but not at the expense of the rights of others. If five of us got pleasure from raping one individual or killing and eating one individual, that would be the greatest amount of pleasure for the uh, greatest number of people, but we violated someone's rights. So yeah. if, if rights would protect that person from us getting great pleasure okay. if we're all sick. In, no, in that's, this, a, yeah. that's a valid argument. Yeah, yeah, so I'm a rights okay. activist. Okay. Human rights protect minorities. Mm -hmm. Human rights protect those who can't protect themselves. They don't, they're not for the majority, because majority can be might makes right, and we've seen That's what happens true. in history. We've had a lot so of human rights are to protect those yeah. who can't protect themselves. Yeah. Children, those who are vulnerable, minority groups, uh, people with disabilities. Okay, that's what rights okay. are for. My question to you is why don't we include animals in that sphere of compassion or uh, consideration? Sentient, sentient animals. Sentient animals. Not non-sentient animals, because I don't give a about a sea sponge, bro. Unless you do. Because why, I don't, I mean. Do you care about a sea sponge? I think they're pretty cool. They're important for biodiversity. Yeah, I mean, like, do you care what Everything's happens to a sea sponge? If I stepped on a sea sponge, would you be upset with me that I'd caused, done something? Yeah, what, what have I done to that sea sponge? Well, you stepped on it, so. Yeah, but what, what about how, Why what does about that, trawling? does a sea sponge deserve rights? Yeah. Legal rights for protection? Legal rights for protection, yeah. They yeah, literally why do. Why do they deserve rights? Uh, for biodiversity reasons. Okay, if you think a sea sponge deserves rights, why do you eat chickens? Because. I, I try to, I've, obviously, it's a difficult in this situation. In so this see, part, okay, so I've got a chicken to, here and a sea sponge to here. To control what I eat in terms of like where it's sourced. Yeah, and that's fine, a lot of people don't. People just mindlessly eat and they think they're doing the right thing because they see green grass and advertising. So I get it, I was part of that same. I'm an investigator as well as an activist, you know, so I see what goes on behind the closed doors that a lot of people don't see. But we've got a chicken here, a sea sponge here. Do you think they deserve equal rights? A yeah. human and a sea sponge deserve yeah. equal rights? Yeah. Is it just as bad to step, step on a sea sponge as it is to step on a human being? Of course. Of course it is. I really need to pull you off of this because this is a bit, it's a bit of an insane position. A, a sea sponge doesn't experience anything. Yeah, but it's about, it's about the So why do you care domino about, effect is, it, is it a problem for me to step on this table? Well, no, because it's why? not, it's because it's inorganic, isn't it? So is it a problem for me to step on a carrot? Well, not on, uh, that's a different one. It's, it's organic? Is it, already no, harvested. No, is it a problem for it's me? Natural okay, is it a problem for me to step on a, a tree root? Well, yeah, it's about it's about how that how it affects. And the how individual. does it affect the how does it affect the individual? There's no individual inside a tree. Well, there, there is an individual inside the tree because there is a tree, isn't there? No, but there, there is a table. There is a table, but obviously. Well, what's inside this table? Animals. What's inside this table? So hydrocarbon, isn't it? It's plastic. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bunch of atoms grouped together. Yeah. But, but it was animal. No, I'm just saying, is there and, and there's an individual inside a tree. There is an individual in, well, we're arguing the same. No, no, we, we're, we're talking about rights here, right? No, yeah, the right. reason we're focusing on this, because you believe, if you believe a sea sponge, mm. which is a, a non-sentient life form, with no brain, no eyes, no functioning nervous system, if you think that they deserve rights the same as a chicken or a human does, then I don't know how you're deriving value for these beings. I don't know what your metric I, is. I don't think it's about the, the individualness of them. Like the ind individualism in terms of their own pain and suffering and what it might do to them compared to what it does to things that like I don't know maybe a little goldfish or something might depend on the sponge to survive and that has a knock-on impact. But why does that ma matter? Because on the Because large the goldfish scale, matters. Too. The only reason that would matter no, is because the goldfish balance. matters. It's a, it's all about because the balance. goldfish has sentience. So the only reason non-sentient uh, things matter is because of the value they bring to sentient beings. Not really. But why would Not you bring really. a goldfish into the picture? I'm talking about because a sea it's sponge. It's all connected. It's all connected. It's yeah. a goldfish as in the knock-on impact. So they're you, all connected. If I torture a sea sponge, does it matter? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who does well, it matter to? It matters to what might. Does depend. it matter to the sea sponge? Yeah. Well, not to the sea sponge. No, 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 no. Okay, no. Okay, so now you understand rights. If it doesn't matter to the sea sponge, it doesn't matter. 
It does matter. It really does. No, okay, well, okay, can we talk about trawling okay. though? Okay. So uh, let's just say there's a sea sponge in the ocean. Yeah. Torturing it does nothing to its external environment. Yeah, but it does. No, no, you're no. Taking no, it out no of context. I'm take... This is all hypothetical. Exactly. This is yeah. how we find out whether a sea sponge deserves rights, right? Because it's, you deserve rights no matter what happens to the external environment, because you matter. So if I if I have you in a room, and you you were born in that room, and I torture you, it's still going to matter no matter if it doesn't affect anything externally, yeah? Because you matter, you experience it. Rights are for the individual. They're not. Okay. Yeah. Therefore, they okay. protect the individual. But there's different so, sorts so, of rights. Yeah. Rights aren't just for the individual. Rights are. Yeah, yeah. There's and positive there's rights general... and there's there's worker rights. I'm talking about the right not to be interfered with. Okay. That's what I want for animals. Okay. So, so with a, I don't with want this, that for animals either. I don't want the. You, that's you, what I'm talking you about. You want trawling. them to have rights, right? Animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to uh, explain to you why animals deserve rights, which is because what happens to them matters to them. So non-sentient things, what happens to them doesn't matter to them. It only matters how it, it really affects does. sentient beings. It, re it does for you if you, because otherwise, right, trawling, okay? Literally all of this seagrass, like it's like 70% of the seagrass in the Mediterranean has been destroyed through trawling. The trawling matters because the, envi the environment only matters because of the sentient beings in there. No, because it's all about balance. Like, what? No, no, wait a second, no, okay. no, we, have to, we have to stop it. The environment only matters to the sentient beings who exist in the environment. Otherwise, why would it matter? Because in and of it's itself. Life. life is literally like, how much life do we know is that? Why does life matter if, if there's no one there to experience it? Well, life would experience, wouldn't it? Life doesn't have an experience. Only life, sentience. Life has an experience, doesn't it? How? Well, how would we have an experience if we have we have a brain, a functioning a nervous brain. system. We can experience the world through our perception, but our why, eyes, our ears. Why should we have a separate and different sort of right to something that doesn't necessarily have a brain like plants have no central nervous system yeah they don't experience it's all the world chemical they do well they do experience the world. no they Fact. have sensory um reactions to stimuli so do we which, that's which, fundamentally what we no, have but we we don't we have a we have a sentient uh we have a subjective experience we are someone yeah we're subjective because of these chemical impulses we're not just it's, a group of chemical impulses. Uh, fundamentally, but we are an individual. At the root, we are. Yeah, but not like a plant. Because of the combination of evolution, to, from non-sentient life to where we are. So why could why should we? And when we were non-sentient, well, what were we? We were non-sentient and say, okay, we couldn't experience it. So but why why would you stop something from say say uh, all humans were? Uh, I don't know, destroyed because they weren't sentient or apes that sort of evolved into humans. Okay. Yeah, they were sentient. They were wiped out. Why they were wiped out. So yeah. that's going to stop the development of sentience. So why why should that be sort of stopped? You're talking about wiping out apes? They no, were I'm sentient. About, I would care okay, about that. No, I'm talking about before that. I'm talking about the root yeah, of Yeah, but we're already here. We're sentient. So, so you've got to make the argument why we should give rights to a tree and a human the same kind of rights. Oh, no, I'm not talking about the same sort of rights. Yeah, but they before just, you said a sponge deserves the same rights as a chicken I and a human. Say that. Oh, you got me yeah, there. no, that's all right. No, that, look, look, you're tripping me out here because yeah, yeah. if I literally had a sponge here and I started stepping on it, you'd probably look at me like, oh, you're stepping on a sponge. If I had a chicken here and I was stepping on it, you'd go, what the f are you doing? That's true. Because you know something about that chicken, don't you? You know that, know. that chicken, that's hurting that chicken. Yeah. yeah, but it's, yeah, I don't know, we can't. It's very difficult for me to comprehend taking it out of the context of its environment, of its I'm ecosystem. I'm trying to get you to fundamentally understand why beings deserve rights, Yeah. right? And that's why I was making the distinction between non-sentient animals like sponges and little organisms that work through stimulation and they're just ziggling around and beings like chickens who have a brain and eyes, they, they experience, they get scared, they, they're individuals, right? And human beings, right, us. So I wanna include these animals that have experience similar to us in this sphere of rights, okay? And being vegan, that's why I call it obligation. All you need to do to stop supporting their rights violations is to live a vegan lifestyle. Okay, well, I understand that, but do you what do you think about monocultures? Biodiversity is much more important than necessarily the farming uh, industry as it is today. Do you understand what I mean? Do you care more mean? about biodiversity than animals in factory farms? Oh, you're trying to get me to say something controversial here. No, because you said I it, think... you said it. I mean, it's just asking you like- No, I think- um, because why does biodiversity matter? For the for the general health of the planet. But why it? does that matter? For the sentient life, for the non-sentient okay. life. And what's the difference life? between a sentient life in biodiversity and a sentient life in factory farms? Well, moral difference. Moral difference. For their experience. 
Wild birds and birds in a factory farm. Well, they just experience different things, don't they? So. Yeah, I'm just saying, but their their personal what matters to them. What matters to them? It might be different because. Yeah. I know that's that's morally wrong. Morally, that is wrong that they're. You think it matters more the animals the, in the wild matter more than the animals in in factory oh, farms? No. no. Okay. Wait, what's the monoculture got to do with that? It's got massively negative impact impacts on the environment. for okay. the environment, yeah. and I think. And we. Eco ecologically, yeah. there's no way of going forwards with monocultures. So do you yeah. think there's a way forwards with uh, sustainable farms that are also uh, well managed? Because obviously you can't deny that biodiversity is important for our existence. Yeah, look, listen, listen, listen. Why would you think more monocropping would happen if we all ate a vegan diet and lived a vegan lifestyle? Not necessarily because it's the right thing to do. But I think the way that... Uh, why, why do you think there would be more monocropping if we all went vegan? Because it's the most viable way for the governments to sort of make it profitable. Because so in a sense, I think that that's what it comes down to, the But, but one second, movement. what do you think the chickens eat that you eat here? Well, they, they eat a whole bunch of rubbish in the troughs. Well, is, they eat soy. And they, they eat grains. Eat soy. Okay, they eat soy and grains. Which are monocropped. Yeah, exactly. They're mono so it's more monocropping has to happen. They, I know they exist now. Do you know 40% of the arable land, which is the, the land that can be farmed on, plant farmed on, 40% of it is used to grow cereal grain crops for animals. Yeah. 40%, nearly half of it in the UK. Yeah. So if we stopped feeding cereal crops to animals, you don't think that would be positive in terms of reducing monocrops? Most well, of reduce the, most feeding of the, the animals, but what you know, about the animals' the in, of Most of the grain in the US is actually grown to feed to animals. Yeah. And then we eat the yeah. animals. I know, this is, I know so it's a massive problem. if we eating the animals, we wouldn't eating the animals. Yeah. Okay, but what about, so what? Would you, say, would you say that there's any compromise in terms of naturally pasturing, okay. uh, reforested area? Do you think there's, there's any... You had an issue with me shooting anyway. a pigeon, right? Mm -hmm. You said that was a rights violation, yeah? yeah? So if there's some cows on a pasture, why wouldn't there's it be no a difference? Why there's wouldn't no it be? difference. Okay. okay. But you don't think... So why don't we do uh, sustainable farming vegan? Why do we have to slaughter animals? Do you think it takes up more room? Uh, like yeah, it's a lot less room. So basically, a, yeah. if you look at the Joseph Poor research from Oxford University, we could reduce the Earth's farmland by 75% if we all adopted a vegan diet because we just, we'd need less land for grazing animals, growing crops to feed animals. Animals have to eat a bunch of plants before they grow, and we just eat the plants directly. Okay. Yeah. No, that's a good point. What about natural predation? What do you, do you think that animal rights are sort of different when it's, it's natural? I would prefer animals didn't violate each other's rights as well, you know, like. But how might... could you control that? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. It's like, where, where do you draw the line between where well, the animals yeah, well, rights? Well, I'll put it like this to you like pieces. this. If a dog, a wild dog was attacking a wild dog, I wouldn't care if it was natural. I'd probably try to stop it. Oh yeah, you know what but I mean? that's, if you were in nature different. and a cougar was attacking you, I wouldn't say circle of life. That's natural predation. I would no. You would stop that for sure. Shoot the cougar to stop it. You'd shoot the cougar to stop him murdering you. Okay. Yeah, you wouldn't shoot him to. But stop why? Him. Why wouldn't you shoot? Wait a second. What if I was attacking? You wouldn't attacking shoot the... a shark to stop him killing me. No, because you could. There's other ways to get rid of it, isn't there? No, but if you only had a gun. If you only had a gun, then you're in the wrong situation, aren't you? You, you, you shouldn't you, have. You wouldn't up shoot the animal to protect me. Uh, well, I would not Shit, to man. protect you. Yeah, self defense. Why, why I'm you, saying, no, I'm why saying self choose me over the shark. I would shoot a person to protect you, bro. If that were, if a human was about to stab you, okay, and I had a gun, I would shoot him. What about me and the shark? What What made you choose shooting the shark? No, because you talked about natural predation. I was just giving you examples of how but I that's was not natural predation. Yeah, you're in the natural habitat. You're an animal. Yeah, but what about say say it's not not humans, no humans involved, somewhere out in God knows where. Uh, a hawk has just eaten a mouse. Do you have a problem with that? Yeah. Okay, but what can you do? It's like if there was a giant hawk coming and eating us, I would still have a problem with it. What can I do about it? I don't know. But I know what you can do. You can be vegan. But how could that stop the, no, but you, the you, natural you, predation? Because that, that One second, violates you, you your rights. Humans, right right humans are violating human rights right now. Humans are violating human rights right now, yeah? Yeah. Okay. They're enslaving people. There's sex slavery going on. There's people being... Uh, there's war crimes happening right now, yeah? Mm -hmm. How do I stop it? Yeah, you're, there's nothing that you can do. Yeah, yeah. The, do I, at least wait you can do is talk on The this. least I can do is not participate in it, yeah? Mm -hmm. Or the least I can do is not violate human rights, yeah? Mm -hmm. True? Okay, yeah. The least you can do is not violate animal rights. You can't stop all animal rights violations yourself. But why does that give you the, the right to go and violate animal rights through your lifestyle when you can avoid it? 
Well, I could avoid it. You can't. Well, well, I'm talking about yeah, exactly. so natural can, so, predation. So, so that doesn't which is, that doesn't that doesn't mean you shouldn't be vegan, thing. though, right? That doesn't mean no, but okay. okay but that's I'm fine. just that's all I'm saying. I'm trying to get my head around your uh, like the boundaries so, so where your mean, your like activist sort of like yeah, but your, obviously there are your things morality, I can't do. I, that, just that, because I can't stop, stop just because I can't stop bombs being dropped onto children, that doesn't mean I don't think it's yeah, wrong, and I don't think it should happen. I don't just talking about like. Human Natural rights, things. I can't control human rights violations happening. No. But I can control what I do. Okay. So why, why would you say, hey man, there's, there's a hawk got to eat a mouse over there. Do you think that's all right? Obviously not for the mouse, it's not all right. But I can't stop it. But that doesn't mean I'm going to go kill the mouse myself. Do you, know, do you know what I'm trying to say though? I know what you're trying to say. So the why does that mean that, that you should... So what, my question to you is, why does that mean you shouldn't be vegan? Because the science says, do you have a moral obligation? You have a moral obligation to be vegan, basically. I do you agree with that? I think it's a, it's, a, it's a rough topic and I think there are certain things... Do you think you have an obligation to avoid uh, the rights think, violations of animals? Yeah, but what about other animals? So why, why no, no, does no, it matter no. to humans? To Don't worry about it. What about other humans? Do, I, do you have an obligation to... Let me just put it back to you. Do you have an obligation to avoid rights violations to humans? Well, yeah, of course so. Okay, but what about other humans? They, they violate the rights of humans. Okay. Yeah, but I, as you said, I've got no you know control saying? of that. Okay, but what you okay. you do have control over the rights violations you commit to other humans, yeah. Yeah. But you have a problem. You so have you a see problem what I'm with. Um, I see exactly what you're saying, but you said that you had a problem with the hawk eating the mouse. For the mouse, it is a problem. That you can be for, a, yeah, for, the, for the, the mouse. But you also said it that you had a problem. the mouse. Would you want to be eaten alive? No, of course, but. Naturally, that's just okay, so why is it that's a natural way of things. That's a natural way. I don't care what's natural, dude. I care what's ethical. And what, but do you think the hawk should become vegan? Sorry? Do you think the hawk should become uh, vegan? Uh, well, in a perfect world, yeah, if I could go like that, 100%. You wouldn't want to stop animals mauling each other alive? If you could go well, like no, that? No, it's just the way that things Brother, have, but if have you could happened. Go, my, my question to you is if you could go like that and stop animals mauling each other alive, would that be morally prefer preferable? I mean, yes, it would be, okay, but then, the then, thing then is, that's your answer. the thing is, we don't live in a perfect world. We don't. And we, we can't stop animals in nature do doing what they do, right? No. no. But you can be vegan. So what's uh, this got yeah, to do with okay. it? It's just, it's too difficult to So to I asked you, is there a moral obligation to be there vegan? Moral... And then you said, but a hawk eats a mouse. I'm yeah. worried about you right here. What... You right here. Yeah. I think I like the hawk. You're not like nothing like the hawk, bro. You're you're I'm not in a survival like, situation, mate. In terms so of your animal meat, rights, you're completely desk You said what happens to chickens is bad. You think animals deserve rights? You're violating their rights when you go and support the industry and buy the chickens. They go to the slaughterhouse for you, yeah. Why don't you just boycott it? If you found out you can be healthy as well, because that was another concern. No, that's that's true actually. But it's been nice talking to you, bro. Thanks a lot, brother. Joey, and you're Jacob. Yeah. Remember. Bye, bro.